digitalization is the very unique chance you have maybe once in your lifetime to question everything. At the end of the day, it's, it's, it's not a technology question. We talk about a change process and the change process starts here. How do you win the next generation, which is not only culture-wise following you, but also from technical point of view that they're able to lead the organization into the next age. It's my role to build the roadmap to the future in a, in a more and more digitalized world where market changes are coming and customer requirements are changing faster and faster and faster. This is here on TV. My name is Hendrik Deckers. I'm here today with Nino Mesut, who is the uh, Global IT Director at BW Paper Systems. Um, very warm welcome, uh, Nino. Thank you. Nino has more than 27 years of experience as a head of IT, CIO, CDO, national, international companies in three different industries, diamond business, furniture business, and now in the machine manufacturing uh, business uh, here at um, BW Paper System, has a, who is a division of Barry Wimmelich. Uh, and they are in the portfolio of uh, creating machines for stationery, for passports, for money, uh, for book, book on demand, binding lines, digital print finishing, RFID, many, many different uh, printing uh, solutions, and have more than 100 uh, locations and companies around the globe. Yeah. Uh, good. Uh, Nino, um, thank you for taking the time. I first wanted to go in to the ecosystem that you have built here at BW Paper Systems. Can you talk about what was the challenge and, and why and how did you build this uh, ecosystem? Uh, probably the why is the most important thing. I'm uh, truly convinced about the fact that no one, no company, independent of the size, independent of the market, independent of the money in the background, will survive in the future without having strong collaborations. Mm -hmm. Collaborations means that you look beyond the borders of your own organization, uh, that you take your uh, suppliers as well as your customers with you together on a digital journey to achieve um, common processes. Mm -hmm. So which means processes starting from the supplier, going through your own organization and ending up with your customer and to ease the life and the process handling costs of your suppliers as well as of your customers. Mm -hmm. so that's A, binding your suppliers and your customers to your own services because from the second you provide them value added services, why should they leave you? Point number one. And point number two, it's uh, decreasing process handling costs because when I, for an example, check automatically, automatically a, a warehouse of a supplier if a certain spare part is available, and the spare part is available, I can initiate already completely automated the follow-up processes, which means send me a, a, a quote, uh, I reply to the quote, I reserve the part, I organize the transport to the customer. In parallel, I can check with my field service who is available to support the customer to build in the spare parts, which guy with what type of skills is available. That is what I talk and what I mean is when I talk about ecosystems taking everything together into one not net network and don't see yourself isolated, don't see your supplier isolated, don't see your customer isolated. That's the ecosystem. But that's quite a challenge because you have more than 100 different companies, you say, yes. that are in different locations around the world with yes. different systems, I can imagine. And yes. And still you want to build with your clients and your suppliers one, one platform. Yeah, but you, you can boil it down to some um, some basics. So one point is that, first of all, we are talking about paper systems now, which is uh, probably the biggest division within inside Berevimela, so we are testing everything in paper systems. Um, but also inside paper systems, we have hundreds of suppliers and, as well as customers. And uh, at the end of the day, we, we have created something what we call an integration layer. And that integration layer has the role of that you link in all these different systems independent. We talk about our own systems, simply where new systems are showing up in the group uh, simply due to acquisitions of new companies. So we have anyhow, every time the same challenge that there's a new IT system with a new set of data, new format of data, where we have to find a way how to involve these data into our daily business. And that's the same challenge as with suppliers and with customers. So 
we developed that piece of software where we link in other systems to receive the data, to normalize the data and to provide the data within what we call single source of truth across the organization. That we have one spot where independent what ERP system we are using, independent what PLM system we are using, independent what might be the ERP system of tomorrow, yeah. that we have one single spot where all data are in and that we are able to work with these data across applications and across limitations of a very fragmented landscape of applications. Mm -hmm. So it's lowering our costs and it makes us less dependent to certain applications as well as certain data apps. So you're not standardizing on ERP PLM system level, but on integration level? On, on data level at the end of the day. What we are doing is, I, I don't know what are the systems of tomorrow. But to have the flexibility to be independent, what are the systems of tomorrow, that I'm independent, what system is a supplier using or a customer using. So to have the big picture of the future IT, I have no idea what are the specifics. Mm -hmm. Due to this, we came up with the idea to develop that layer to be independent. And to have one database below where we are working with um, um, InterSystems, which is a US database uh, manufacturer, and they have a multi-dimensional system, which is called IRIS, what we're using due to the speed and due to the opportunities to have that centralized hub of all data. It's a huge challenge, but I think it's, and I'm convinced about that, that will make our future life far easier, especially when we talk about new acquisitions. So you've built an integration layer. I understand that's a custom-built Java system. Yes. Uh, so how, how did you approach that? How did you source that? How did you develop that? What was the approach? We have the same challenge like any other company on this globe as well. We have something which is called daily business and we have the project business. So that's a challenge itself. Uh, traditionally, when you talk about new things, especially when you, from the second you have convinced the business, business is trying to give you the people which have time. But these are not the people you need. You need the people which do hurt the business because of their skills because they are essential for the business. So after fighting with the business that we got the right resources, um, we have developed that product with a local implementation partner, which is located in Berlin, as well as with our workbench, what we have in the Ukraine, uh, simply due to the fact, or why Ukraine? It's simply due to the fact that they're extremely high educated people. Culture is very close to, in brackets, what's, what I would call our culture. And um, so with those parties together, we have developed that product. And meanwhile, we have the product at a stage where we really do use it. So we really work with that right now. And um, the results are better than what I expected. So talking about speed. So for an example, taking um, a huge bunch of records, uh, analyzing the records, checking for duplicates, uh, normalizing the data, we talk about milliseconds, mm -hmm. um, so it's really fast. So it's a real-time, yes. operational, unified, yes. standardized yes. data platform. And that's, and that's yeah, and, and exactly you name it, and, and that's one of the most important things for us is when we talk about data warehouses, when we talk about data lakes, it's always a look back. Because from the second you create the data, it takes or one hour or 10 hours, or it's a night run or whatever, and then you have a dashboard which is showing you a status which was 12 hours ago. We talk about something where we want to have the same information in real time. And that is the reason why we have created also that layer which is taken from the productive systems, independent if we talk about SAP or XA or whatsoever, taking the data on a regular basis into that centralized hub. And then from the second I want to query that, I do that like this on real time data. Mm -hmm. Which means we're able to provide the business not only real time data, but in the next stage, what we would like to achieve is, is to combine it with artificial intelligence. So it's the system is telling our people, based on the data you have right now, I propose the following next steps. And this doesn't work for me with data which are 10, 12, 24 hours old. That's one of the additional reasons why we have created that, that type of technology. So InterSystems is the database, yes. custom developed Java is the integration yes. layer, and then you, I guess you have a presentation layer as well. Yes. And there we are currently working on a Salesforce. Uh, Salesforce, for most people, they call it a CRM system. It's, it's not for me a CRM system. Um, Salesforce is for me a, a platform. 
And a platform is for me something which is extremely important because I want to provide users one user interface instead of 10 of different applications. And most people do have a platform already in their pocket, so-called mobile device. Independent if you talk about Apple or you talk about Android, you have always dozens of applications which are sharing the same environment. That's for me a platform and Salesforce is pretty much the same. So from the second we have um, a user interface available or processes available on Salesforce. Immediately we can use it on a mobile device. And what we did is working with the business together about the processes of the future. The important step for us is not to copy the processes of the past only into new technology. That's not the idea behind. Because digitalization is the very unique chance you have maybe once in your lifetime to question everything, to question all processes. And that's a learning curve. And when we went with the business tr through that, that was a really painful process because people need to question things they did over the last two decades in a certain order. Mm -hmm. And now you tell them, let's forget that. Yeah. Let's try it in a different way. And then you take the people from various departments, in our case, from all these global locations, we take the people together, so some are responsible for European market or German market or wherever and others are responsible for the North American markets or South America or whatever and now they have to find an aligned process and believe me that's, that's a painful process for everybody, for each and everybody okay. and um, it takes a long time and the second learning curve is that you find out in how many different systems of your fragmented landscape you have similar information saved like an address it's in an ERP system, it's probably in a CRM system, it's uh, with extended information probably in Outlook and wherever. And you have to maintain all these data in different systems. Yeah. And you find out uh, how crap your data are. And uh, sometimes you wonder how you did survive with that type of data. But um, that's a real learning curve for the business because at the very beginning they said, they said to us, listen, it's spare parts business. We know this up and down and left to the right and nobody can explain us something about spare parts business. But when you talk then to customers, what is your happy world scenario of future spare parts business? Talking to us as your supplier of the spare parts, they come with complete different ideas around the corner and things which are logical, like, like we had a huge customer from Austria who told us, listen, uh, I do not want to wait until you send us spare parts. I want you guys to shoot in a drawing into my steel 3D printer, which I want to purchase from you guys, which is again a different business model. I want to print that part, I build it in until the original part arrives. Future business, cool idea. Mm -hmm. And we have to take control about these things or to offer those services to our customers. Yeah. Otherwise, I will. why should they purchase from us spare parts in the future? And that's not only our challenge. You can look to, to automotive. It's the same like us, a major part of the revenue is done by spare parts. So if now everybody can print on spare parts, that's a game changer. That will be huge. Yes. So we have to take care about that, mm -hmm. which means I cannot forbid a customer, you are not allowed to print it because honestly, he, can do, that. <laughs> he, he can do that without asking us. I mean, uh, you, you, you purchase a scanner, a 3D scanner, then you have the model, then you make two, three, four test prints and you will find out a way how it's working. But the game changer is that people like you and me, and at least I'm not an engineer, that I'm now able to produce spare parts and I can sell those spare parts certainly at a complete different price mm -hmm. than we are able to do that or a customer is able to do that by himself. So which means I have to create new business models with the support of IT, which ensure best possible service to our customers, which means if I give him the happy world scenario, not talking only about the spare parts, that, but for an example that our artificial intelligence is telling our people from the field service or spare parts business, hey, contact customer XYZ because the operational hours are already exceeded, maybe you can offer him something different. Or to treat a customer in a way that when he logs in and into our systems, that the system is not only recognizing who is it, but also what is the area of interest. So if a technical person is logging in, the system is providing him technical information, self-service information and things like this. If it's someone from the purchase department, we give him the special offer. And um, that is what I call 
to have ecosystems and IT which is focused on customer needs and suppliers' needs. So it's the service level, it's the customer experience that will make a difference. Yes, because absolutely. Otherwise everybody can 3D print your Absolutely. Your you have to invite the customer, you have to, to provide a service level where even if one of these service levels fails because the customer is able to do that in the future by himself, that the rest of the range of services is that big so that the customer says, I have no reason to change. Mm-hmm. Apple, you can, you, can, you can complain about the pricing, but the service level is that high, and that's my own experience. I had twice in my life the, the chance to, to deal with the Apple hotline. Mm-hmm. And the service is that damn good that, you, that I really said to myself, whatever price they request, it's, it's, it's okay because of that service what they offer. Yeah. Now, you're the global IT director. Yes. I understood you travel 150 times a year. I travel a lot, yes. <laughs> you travel a lot. Tell us how is, your, how is IT and, and digital organized in uh, BW Paper Systems? Good question. Um, I, think we are, I think we are like most other companies in that way. So we did, we, at the very beginning we, ha- we have been full of enthusiasm and we said, we set up our own digitalization team. We take the best people from the business and then we start um, rocking really everything and building up the future uh, landscape. Meanwhile, after all these sprints we have initiated, so we have an agile development, we have a core team of people of the business which is really working with us and they are investing a lot of time and it was a learning curve for them as well for us. And meanwhile, we have now people from different parts of the world working with us together on different projects, what we call the phase one. Mm -hmm. So one part of these projects is, for example, that first time in history, all our warehouses are connected in the way that we are able to query all data across warehouses in real time. Uh, A second project is that we have a 360 degree view on a customer, that our uh, salespeople, that our field service people, that our spare parts people have at all time updated information about the customer. Because whatever someone is doing with a customer, it's automatically linked to that customer. Mm -hmm. So which means we have a track record of independent, if we talk about chat, about an email, about a phone call, about a visit or whatsoever. Uh, Then we have um, connected spare parts where we want to uh, ease and to digitalize the uh, spare parts business with with, with customers. And so we have identified five business-driven projects and two technical-driven projects where we have the business involved as well as the NT involved. And um, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's not a technology question. We talk about a change process, and the change process starts here. Mm-hmm. So you have to take the people with you to explain them again and again and again how to question things different. And um, then we spoke to customers, we spoke to suppliers to find out what is their opinion. So we involved them from the day number one to, to not to develop something or not to design something where people would say afterwards, nice colors, but nobody needs it. Um, so t- to ensure that we do something, what business is, what the business really needs, we, we invited each and everybody from the beginning. But it's, it's a hard process. Yeah, but you have, so you have IT teams around the world. Yes. And then you have a central or development team in, in Ukraine, is that correct? We have, we have our major implementation partner as a company in, in Berlin. Mm-hmm. And we have a, what we call always our workbench, which is in the Ukraine. Um, knowing these people a long period of time and knowing their skills and they are working with us on the more deep technical things because they don't need them to talk to the business because that would create probably barriers A of time difference talking to the US and uh, B lack of understanding of the business processes and so we have our uh, partner in Berlin they are deeply involved with our business people as well as with our IT people mm-hmm. And uh, taking, and that's a good thing, taking our own IT people with them on that journey to develop with new technologies, develop uh, in a new environment, developing with new processes, where we talk about Agile, for example. Mm -hmm. And um, we brought these people up to to one place more than once to, to create a team. And it took some time, but meanwhile, they act as a team. Meanwhile, they work as a team, independent where they are located. 
because I, I, I can imagine that's a challenge. It is. They're all over the place, all it over is. the world. And it is, uh, it is. But meanwhile, of course, there are uh, good days and bad days, and it's, it's, uh, it's like in any type of business relation or private relation, mm -hmm. uh, there are also days where they really start fighting to each other. But, but meanwhile, they're really acting as a team, and it gets better and better. Yeah. And uh, so we are increasing speed by that, because now it's the same like if you, if, you, if you build a house. You start with the seller. So I think the seller, we have a pretty good basement now. Now let's make the rest of the rooms and the other floors. But it's essential that you have a, a, a basement where you can really trust on, where you can really build the future on. Mm -hmm. And I think that basement we have right now. Okay. So you, um, you work here now almost three years. Did you have to make a lot of changes in the, in the way IT is, is organized here? For the, for the daily business, I think uh, paper systems is pretty good organized, pretty good organized in a way that, um, like with other companies I know, is it's, it's sometimes a wonder what type of things people do accept or simply take it as given or written in stone what you would never normally accept. I'll give you one example. Uh, two decades, it was not possible to query data across the warehouses. And people said, wow, if I need to know what's in Italy in the warehouse, I call them. There is a phone. And people took, took this as granted. That, that's the best possible process because I never questioned it. So we have minor changes in daily business. We, we still do try to support daily business in when they need uh, uh, customization of software product A, B, or C. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, we are most focused on developing the future because I truly do believe that, that it's, it's my role, or also my role, to, to, to build the roadmap to the future in a, in a more and more digitalized world where market changes are coming and customer requirements are changing faster and faster and faster. Yeah. And um, with the current IT, what we have, we are certainly not able to follow that. Could you put a percentage on the, the, the resources that go in to keeping the lights on and in, into developing new, um, new functionalities? And yes, I would say 70% are focused on keeping the lights on and 20-30% are focused on the next level. Talking about IT resources, yep. talking about business resources, we have, uh, the, I think, the good people and the right people working with us on the processes of the, of the future. Mm -hmm. And um, so part of the deal was that we start that digitalized journey with good people but with a small team because honestly nobody had a real understanding digitalization, what does it mean at the end of the day? Talking about our senior leadership teams, meanwhile they're getting better and better into the picture and understanding more and more um, what it does or what it could be. Uh, but at the very beginning everybody was very skeptical so I think now for the next phase, which uh, starts uh, in, in September, I think we have far better support than we had in phase number one, because uh, we first had to, to show the people that all the things we're talking about are really existing, <laughs> are really possible. And um, You had to deliver on your promises first. Yes, okay. uh, I think, and I, I honestly do understand that. I mean, when you go to the president of an organization and tell him, listen, all the things you did in the last years, we can do it far better in a completely different way then it's already lucky when he still com continues to listen to you. And I think I was really a pain for them, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but that's my job. And so you're, you're part of the global, the global management team then? How, how is, that, how is the alignment with IT and, and business we have, organized? We have a global board of IT directors where I'm a part of, and uh, that's, uh, these are five global IT directors. And uh, so I think IT-wise we are the highest level, and. Uh, talking about um, the, the future setup, but even within that group, uh, it was really, really a long journey to convince them to do things different because it's, it's, it's a different, I think, or the difference makes it, if, if you're working for decades in the same organization, it's very difficult for you to, to, get, to come with an outside view to, to the same organization. And um, others are completely drawn in their daily business, so trying to convince them have a look to it from a different angle, it's, it's, it's difficult for them. But um, I can live with, with having different opinions and I can live with uh, not believing in, in, in things until you are convinced about it and it takes time. But, but 
it's, 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 a, it's a headache for myself sometimes because you're talking to people where you believe, hey, it's IT world, mm -hmm. and it's, it's difficult to, to explain again and again and again the same things. On one hand, as I said, I do understand it, but most important for me is that the collaboration with the colleagues is very trustful. So we can have different opinions, we fight about different opinions, but it's a fight and with fair weapons and under normal circumstances, so it's, it's, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I know that they are only, only will listen when we go live and then they will see what's possible and then they will tell me, oh, you never explained to me it that way. Yeah. So, so how would you describe your, your, your currently the, your fundamental role in the organization and how do you think it will evolve in the coming years? I think currently my role is always, I think, to put the finger into the wounds and to, to question things again. And um, I think that's currently my role because, because I have an outside view and I could put myself very easy in a position of, of a third person. And uh, what I try to, to deliver is to give the so-called Amazon feeling to our customers and suppliers and to our employees. Mm -hmm. And to, to give them something where they can easily be more successful with. And um, that is what I want to achieve. And um, to do this, it took me more than two years to convince our own people at least to start. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's a long fight and that's one of the reasons for my gray hair. And, um, uh, but I think it's, it's worse and uh, I don't see myself in a role that I'm responsible to keep the lights on. It's mm -hmm. part of my responsibility, yes, but honestly, I have to build an IT for the next generation. Mm -hmm. And um, I do not understand people which are sitting back and saying, okay, I'm the CIO or global director or however you want to call it. Um, so we have SAP, we have XA, we have whatsoever called system or systems, and I'm happy with that. And I do not think a second about what could be if I do that in a different way. That's, that's not the way how it could work, and that's not what is satisfying me. So you're driven by change? It excites absolutely. you to change absolutely. things? Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm driven. I, I don't do things because of a cool technology. I mean, I'm a native IT person, and um, I, 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 of course I like cool technologies. But as long as there's no business value behind, it makes no sense to, to play with that and to use it. So first focus is the business value because that's not only paying my salary, it's also the paying the salary of all of my colleagues. Yeah. And um, if we want to be the number one in the market and we want to be a serious big player in the market, then I have to think about what could support the company in the best way. And uh, if I support the company in the best possible way, then I did my job hopefully good. And if I do the same for my suppliers and for my customers, then I hopefully make the best possible job. That's driving me. Yeah. How easy is it to attract and build successful teams for you? Difficult question because um, every, every company is stating we have the best possible culture, we have the best possible environment for, to build up your own career. Nobody will ever tell you, listen, if you come to us, honestly, we are not different than others. And um, when I see, um, for example, advertisement in, in magazines or on the internet, then we are like others stating we are a global player, we are this good, that good. That's the reason why we are looking for you. Coming again, again, where I'm a pain in something, uh, I tell the people, why don't we make a difference that we say, hey, we are not good in this and that and that, and here we are bad as well, but that's the reason why we're looking for you. So, and we have a leadership style, management is, is not the word usually we are using. We, we have a leadership style, which is mostly driven by the CEO of the organization called Bob Chapman, and he has a, he calls it truly human leadership and at the end of the day, it, everybody can check that on the internet, just go to YouTube and uh, search for Bob Chapman. Um, the way that he setting up the leadership culture is that we have a very open-minded culture, which means um, it's far easier to hire people than, for example, to fire people. So people have a very trustful environment. and. Um, you, for example, I know a couple of people uh, which in other organizations due to, for example, they've been responsible for a certain department or unit or I don't know what, something went wrong and I know more than one organization where that would be your last day. Not in Berevimela. In Berevimela they try to find two dozen different ways how to give you a second, a third, a fourth and a fifth chance. 
does this work for everybody? Do I agree with all persons which are under that umbrella? Certainly not. But in general, I think it's, it's a cool thing mm -hmm. because it's giving you the opportunity to try out things. And if you fail, so that certainly nobody wants to fail, but it does not mean automatically that you are killed. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think that, that the culture which is created is, um, it's, it's a culture I like. So the challenge is now, if you write that down on the internet, you write that down in a magazine, you write that down somewhere else, and everybody would say, like I did at the beginning, hey, nobody is saying we are bad. Uh, I can only invite people to, to find out if that is completely nonsense, what I'm telling you now, yes or no. But um, what I personally like, for example, is uh, we have a very uh, different culture in how we are dressed, for example. That's a typical way um, how we are dressed. So no, I, I think I've never seen someone in a suit. Um, and, and, and the clothes does not make a leader here. So even the presidents have uh, trousers, jacket, shirt, but, but you recognize people due to the clothing. So on every airport I am, or I find people from paper systems or from any other division, and I recognize them by the clothing. And um, we have a very open-minded culture. So, so it's no nonsense, open-minded, and very human-centric. It's human no central. nonsense. It's really human-centric culture. That's one of the reasons why it's a um, culture people develop in CPD is a name what others call HR. Mm -hmm. So we have an own university, the Berwebele University. It starts with communication training, so that you listen, how to listen, how to communicate. It doesn't mean automatically that I follow these rules each and every day and every minute, but we have a training which is trying to, 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 to provide a similar understanding of how to interact with other humans mm -hmm. inside Berwebele. And that's something which is, I think, really positive because it uh, ensures you that you are on the same communication level with, with colleagues, mm -hmm. wherever they are, higher, lower, whatever. And uh, I think that's, that's, that's positive. At the end of the day, we have the same challenges like all other um, enterprises as well, is how to find the people for tomorrow. I mean, we, we checked out, for an example, and I can only talk now about IT, um, that we have um, a, an age structure where key people or a huge bunch of key people is leaving the organization due to retirement within the next, let's say, three to five years. So we have to find a solution for that. So on one hand, we have now um, the challenge that we have to collect knowledge. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how do I collect knowledge in the organization? How do I structure that knowledge? Yeah. And how can I make that knowledge available for the next generation? And then comes digitalization again into the game. If I already collect knowledge, why don't I use the same knowledge to give additional value-added services to my customers as a self-service? Mm -hmm. Because to enable a customer when there is a machine down and we know the symptoms, why not to provide him a self-service, push the following five buttons and pray, and probably it's working again, uh, why not to use the same source of information, not only for our own people, but also to customers? Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the initiatives uh, we are currently working on, and which means in both directions, on one hand to collect knowledge, on the other hand to provide that knowledge to, to, to customers. But second point is, of course, that we need to educate people in a way for, for the future. And then it's a big question, what is the future? Is it our standard systems, which we have today in use, or is the future what we are currently building, or is the future a mix of it because I have to lead it from the current environment to the future environment? That is the reason why I um, want to initiate um, collaboration with big universities. Um, that we train people for, to a certain degree what, what we need to, to, to talk in diamond industry, to take a rough diamond and to cut and to polish it yep. until we have uh, the guy we, or the person we need skill wise and then to, to provide them a future. And um, I think that's also part of, of a change process that you think about how do you win the next generation which is not only culture-wise following you, but also from technical point of view that they're able to lead the organization into the next age. Mm -hmm. So, and that's another challenge. So if you ask how do we find the next people, I think we have to educate them by ourselves. 
because the markets are extremely empty. Yeah. So you, you talked about the, let's say, leadership style of the company. Let's, let's talk about your style. I mean, you worked in furniture, diamond business before. How was your leadership style there and has it changed working here? I mean, No, I, I think I have a very simple, I, I think I have two simple reasons, uh, or two simple uh, methods, not reason, but two simple methods. So one thing is um, I don't take myself really too serious. Um, I like to laugh, I like to make jokes with people, independent if they are high level, low level, whatever, I don't care. You like to drink beer, play music? We have beer, that's the difference between the two of us, <laughs> so but <laughs> Yes, and music of course as well. Um, so that's, that's one point and honestly I, I, I try to treat people in the same way I want to be treated. So it's, it's why to make there any difference? I want to have them as colleagues and there is a very simple experience what I made over the last two, three decades is when you want people to walk with you the extra mile when it's necessary, because there's time pressure, project is next to the end, you need to work an entire weekend, for example, they only do that as a payback, the way you have dealt with them before. Mm -hmm. So, and I have a very simple way of acting with that, so life is always given and taken, so if someone is staying with a team over a weekend, they're really pushing it to the maximum, that something is done, then send them home for two days, but don't request them to give you uh, a request for vacation or something like this. Simply send them home. Mm -hmm. So I try to do it by, by, by guts feeling. And we have a, that's maybe something different. Uh, when you begin with Ber Wemela, then most of the people make a disk profile check, which is that, um, and for example, some offices in the US, when you enter the office, you see uh, next to the door, the so disk profile of that person where you're entering. Would be difficult with GDPR, but, <laughs> <laughs> but they do that by themselves. Yep. And so you know what type of person is there. And uh, so one of the results of my disk profile was a high I, so emotional person, mm -hmm. uh, which I certainly can confirm. So I do that by, by guts feeling. I don't follow that rule that I say, uh, someone is acting in that way, so I have to act in another way or in a certain way. I do that by guts feeling. Yep. So you're a people person? Is Certainly, yes. Yeah. So you deliver by making other people successful? Is that your way to You can only win success? as a team. As a single player, I mean, what is Messi without this team? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Or Ronaldo? Nothing without the team. So you only win as a team. Yeah. So independent of what position you have in the team. Or to, to, to you just mentioned it, coming um, to music. Um, take an orchestra. So classical orchestra. He has a conductor. Usually he plays one instrument, probably two. But each and everybody in that orchestra plays certainly the individual instrument 100 times better than he does. But he's the one who knows how it should sound at the end of the day. Take me in that position. I know what I want to achieve. I know how it should sound. And I need now the people with the specific skills where I can try to support them, where I can try to guide them. But I know the big picture and I know exactly how it should sound. Yeah. That's, I think, best Is that how, how you look at yourself, that you're the conductor of this, uh, this part of the business? I think, yes. Yeah. So I think uh, what has changed from my point of view in the IT is, in earlier days, IT was never in the driver's seat. IT was, IT was always the, the uh, deliverable department where you can complain about when your computer is not working and, by the way, the figures are wrong, so it must be an IT error. Everything was an IT error. Yeah. And IT and finance was always the cost center view. And still today we have uh, setups where the CIO reports to the CFO, which is from those old days. Yeah. I'm truly convinced about the point that IT can and should be a revenue contributor. Mm -hmm. I think we can do far more than just to keep the lights on. Yeah. And uh, we can deliver services where people are willing and able to pay money for. And that is uh, my understanding of IT. Let's talk a bit more about your personality type. So we're using the Myers-Briggs, the MBTI uh, personality uh, profiles as a common thread in these uh, uh, conversations. Your MBTI profile is you're an ENFJ. So E, you're extrovert, that shows off. Uh, N, you're more look at the big picture than at the, at the, at the details. F, you're a people person, emotions are important. 
and J is you have strong opinions and you put them through and, and, and once you make a decision. All in that together uh, is uh, an a NFJ, also known as the protagonist or the giver. They're enthusiastic, supportive and action-oriented people. Strong leaders with a clear idea on how to improve organizations to better serve the needs of people. How does that sound? That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. So that's the result of the test I made, <laughs> I guess. So ENFGs are confident in their mission, often balance their goal orientation with a focus on interpersonal process. They see cooperation, want others on board in action and spirit, and they often take on a mentorship role and they like to help their employees develop as workers and as people. Is, are, are you a good mentor to your people? I hope. At the end of the day, you have to ask the people, but I hope I am. Um, at least, I think in the past and, and also right now, I'm, I'm, I think, good to, to join teams and to achieve success together. So, and, and that's for me something important, um, um, that, that, that the people are sharing the vision, that the people know why they are doing that. Yeah. And that's for me really important, they need to understand what we want to achieve together. And it's never me, Nino, who is, who is doing that. It's always the teams where we're working with because I really do share that opinion or the comparison to, to football. You can be called Ronaldo, but if you have nobody who is giving you the right pass in the right moment, then what? Yeah. So, well, I, I wonder you, I mean, you travel so much. Yeah. You clearly work very hard. Uh, so how do you, how do you manage uh, your family life, you have family, daughter... I am, I am managed. How do, you <laughs> <laughs> how do you manage that? And how do you cope with the stress that, that comes with the job? I, like I'm this? doing that for, for a really long time now, many, many years. And, and, and uh, I think I can... What I'm able to is when I'm coming home, independent now, if it's today when I'm driving home or when I'm coming after 10 days home from the US, uh, when I'm home it takes maybe an hour and then I'm at home. So it's, I can easily switch from, from business thinking back to, to private thinking and, um, and vice versa. I don't know why. Probably one of the reasons is that I don't see work. I think work is a part of my lifetime and it's a, it's, it's a part of hobby. I like the things what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. It's not for me that I have to stand up in the morning and say, shit, again, now you have again this job. Of course I have tasks I hate. Ask me to create a budget. That's really something I hate. But, um, but um, I, I think I have passion for the things I'm doing, independent if it's now work or, or music or family life. Mm -hmm. It's uh, what, I, what I'm doing, I try to do with 100%. It doesn't work always with 100%, but at least I try. And I don't have to push myself because these are the things I love and I like. And what's your favorite way to unstress, let's say, or to relax? Music. Music. Yeah. Talk, talk a little bit about what, what, that, what, what do you do with, with music? I take my piano. Uh, uh, best thing for me is um, um, I, I take my piano, uh, sit at the piano, or I just go to uh, Spotify or whatsoever, take my headphones, switching on Spotify or whatever type of music, listen to music, having a glass of wine in front of me. Ten minutes later, I'm the most relaxed person on this planet. Mm -hmm. Whatever happens. I, it's like switch on off. Uh, same when I'm sitting at the piano, it's uh, switching on off, it's, it's relaxing immediately. Um, or um, I, I, in earlier days I was diving a lot, um, just taking a bottle, jumping into the pool, laying on the, on the bottom of the pool, independent if it's two meters or five meters or whatsoever, being there half an hour, you are the most relaxed person in the world. Mm -hmm. So for me it's easy to relax. So yeah. when I'm Traveling back from the US, sitting in the plane, I'm starting already going back into private mode. Mm -hmm. So when I'm arriving in Frankfurt, I'm already most probably back in private mode. Okay. So maybe a, a bit of an off-topic question, but what is it about music? Because music is something special. And I, I've always asked myself the question, why is it that music is something so special? So what is it? It triggers strings in, in everybody. So and it's independent what type of music. I, I never met a person in my life which, where music has no impact at all. Mm -hmm. Or that is a completely non-emotional person, which I never met. 
Um, but I cannot imagine that there is no music at all which triggers you, independent if it's R&B or if it's jazz or soul or techno, or I don't know what. There are music styles where I've honestly, uh, it's difficult for me to understand, okay, what, what drives it, but, but there are enough people which do like it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think music, music is always a trigger and there's nothing where you can, at least from my point of view, express more emotions with than music. But if you ask a painter, he would explain you exactly the same with paintings. Uh, I do not understand it, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. You told me that you also compose yeah. and that you have quite a long background in composing yeah. and you yeah. talk a little bit about that. <laughs> when I was a kid, um, I was growing up in, in, in Cologne and uh, my best friend, who's today a, a real well-known musician and singer in Cologne, um, his father was, was teaching us uh, piano and then teaching us jazz and teaching us um, how to arrange music and, and, and uh, all these things. So for me, it was the best school on earth because uh, A, uh, I always, we, we had always a kind of competition in between of us, but he's far more talented than I am. And, uh, but in, nevertheless, it was a kind of competition mm -hmm. and it's really impressive for young girls. And so that was driving us. <laughs> so That's a good motivation. <laughs> it, it's the best motivation you can imagine. So when you are 14 <laughs> and 15 and you know you go to a piano and you can at least play most of the things, you just hear it and you can play it, then um, it's, it's a bridge to a lot of female hearts. Mm -hmm. And um, that is what I recognize pretty early. Yeah. And that's a huge motivation. On a personal level, what are the what are for you the most important values in life? What is it you have a you have a daughter? What is the values that you want to give to your daughter? Family, is for me the biggest value, because um, sooner or later there comes a day when, for example, your parents are gone, and um, my mother-in-law, for example, she died far too early, and. Um, it was the first time that I had that impact that close to me. And um, that, that you, from one second to the other, you still have the number in your mobile device, but you, you can dial it, but nobody picks up. And so there have been a couple of things where I said by myself, wow, everything has an end. Also that, and that was driving me, for example, to, to have far closer contact to my parents. I mean, honestly, I don't know one person where parents could not be sometimes a really difficult thing. But at the, end, at the end of the day, there comes the day you will miss it. And, um, and family has, for me, certainly the highest value of all. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing which comes even close to that. So, and which means it has, for me, um, it's for me the most important thing. Yeah. And where everything compared to this is less important. How the second thing is mm -hmm. uh, health. So um, I was really a strong smoker and um, my wife was quitting smoking and uh, I continued to smoke and then she said to me, in the future, when you are already dead, then I will travel across the globe. I will make cruises, I will go to the United States, I will go to Canada with a camper, I will do all these things. Unfortunately, you are dead then. <laughs> she, took, she made that a couple of times and, um, and then I told her, listen, I'm tired of that because I didn't want to have, A, I didn't want to have to make her all the cruise alone. So point number one. Point number two was that I was thinking by myself, if she was able to quit, why shouldn't I? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I told her, listen, we do that in the following way. I take uh, something to drink in front of me. I take my music. Last evening I smoke, but I can drink whatever I want and how much I want. So I did. Next day I stopped. So that's now three and a, uh, three and a half years ago. And um, so family, health, in that order, everything else you can manage. Yeah. When, when are you happy at, 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 in, in your job? Because you, I mean, it's easy for you to relax, I understand. Uh, you're driven by people and, and making an impact. When you go home at the end of the day or you fly back and you say, well, now I'm really... When we, when we are successful. So, for an example, when we have, I mean, each project has certain milestones. And uh, when we achieve a milestone and we are really convinced, yeah, that's exactly the right thing we did. Or when we get a confirmation that the vision is right. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. that, for example, I had that with suppliers when suppliers told me, you know, whatever you're dreaming about, we have that already. Then I started to, to dig into the details and found out that was purely marketing. Mm -hmm. They had nothing. But when now those suppliers are coming back, and I had that uh, two, three weeks ago, where a really big supplier came back and told me, now we understood what, we're dream what you're dreaming about. Mm -hmm. Yes, we want to join. Yeah. Uh, that is, for me, success. When we achieve milestones, which are really confirming that we're on the right way, then it's success. And um, that makes me happy, yeah. yeah. But on the other hand, you have fails as well, things where you say, so let's, okay. let's talk about your most brilliant failure. You're in business for <laughs> IT business for 27 years, oh, different yes. companies. What is your most brilliant failure that you're ever responsible for and, and, and what did you learn from that? I think I was pretty young. I was about 26, 27 and um, I was responsible to develop a product um, for home banking that was from um, Sparkassenverbund in um, Germany and that was in Cologne. So I, I designed the product and I designed the things which I was believing that's the future of home banking. And we talk about the 80s. So it was a completely different world than what we have today. And um, I had already in mind to do that via a mobile phone. And I had my first mobile phone, which has nothing to do with the smartphone of today. It was like a block like this. Yes, you could kill someone with that phone. <laughs> um, but I had already in mind to, to develop something which is mobile, that you can do banking from wherever you are. And I proposed it, I made a design concept, I made everything and I proposed it to the people of the bank and they told me that's complete nuts, that will never come. And uh, <laughs> yeah, they have been wrong. Um, but, but I had already that idea at that time and the other idea I had already far before it started was to have a game where thousands of players are able to play online. And... Um, we had not the technology for that, but I was dreaming about that, creating that. And um, so talk to people even from, from IT people, which, which I knew at the time, but um, A, no technology, and B, nobody was sharing that idea. Mm -hmm. Today it's a normal business and you can do, I mean, have a look to Warcraft, they are making millions, or have a look to, yeah. to Red Dead Redemption, they made one billion revenue within four weeks. So I was always, Sometimes I really have the feeling that I'm sometimes ahead of the time, but it doesn't mean that it's always good. You can be with the right product at the wrong time on the market, could be even too early, yep. and then it's a fail. Mm -hmm. And we had that in the furniture industry, for an example, when we wanted to, to automate processes completely, that you as a customer and you order, and you have real Amazon feeling because you're ordering from home, that was too early. And we developed it completely, it was available, yeah. but it, it was too early. These interviews have, are being watched by many people uh, in IT and, and abroad, also by aspiring um, uh, future CIOs, future digital leaders. You as a successful CIO, what would your advice be to these uh, younger people? I would always advise, independent if it's IT or business, to question things, not taking anything as written in stone, not taking anything taken as granted. Question things. Mm -hmm. Put yourself simply in the position that you ask yourself, what would be the happy world scenario, for an example, to purchase something or to sell something or to have a certain process. Just have a look to your own daily business and take a pencil and imagine this is a magic wand. Mm -hmm. If it's a magic wand, what would I change? And then, if you have that described, then only in the second or third step, think about how could it be realized? What type of technologies are necessary? But don't stop thinking about that thing when you say, okay, technology doesn't exist. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. For most things, you will find a technical solution afterwards, but first you need to have the vision. And um, what, what I wonder always, and that's probably my second advice is, that people think in very isolated boxes talking about digital worlds. I mean, if you have a web shop, that's not digital world. It's only a web shop. It's a sales channel, nothing more, nothing less. But if you want to have new business, I mean, a digitalized business, then you need far more than only the web shop. You need the processes in front of that 
and behind that. And so take a starting point and let it grow from that moment in all directions. Mm -hmm. And don't make a stop as a border of a department. Don't stop at the border of the company. Think beyond that. Yeah. That would probably be my advice. Is there anything in this, um, in this conversation that we, that we had that you still wanted to add? Anything that we haven't discussed about or that you wanted to, uh, to share to people um, looking at this? The funny thing is, since, since there was that um, announcement that I'm one of the finalists, I had uh, more than one company contacting me via LinkedIn. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Yeah, but asking for advice, and that's that's a, that's the interesting thing. So it's uh, of course you have also these companies which are trying to offer you something, whatever type of product. And uh, again, I always see uh, there are a lot of products which are very isolated part of the entire chain, but there are really a lot of companies asking for advice, which shows me that most companies are aware of the fact that they have to do something but they have no idea what. So they don't know it and they have no vision, they have no imagination. No. And that has nothing to do with technical skills. Mm -hmm. And um, that is at least my learning curve now over the last couple of months mm -hmm. since I was uh, appointed as one of the finalists. So the last question is, I mean, as, as a digital leader, and you say this, I mean, it's, it's a quite, um, a challenging role it's also a very interesting role to play but how do you make you how do you make sure that you uh, keep on top of latest developments how do you learn because there's so much out there and and, and things change so quickly how do you what are your ways to uh, to keep on top of things first of all I stay in contact with with people where I do believe that they're very innovative mm -hmm. um, so I try also to to learn from others and the way how they question things. The second is, of course, I read a lot and uh, then I, I see if it, I can imagine if that could have an impact to our industry or probably to other industries like e.g. 3D printing. And um, so it's a, a continuous learning. I mean, since, since I was done with my studies, uh, you, you, you continue to learn and to learn and to learn because we are in a very fast developing market and industry. And uh, so every couple of weeks there are new technologies raising up and um, new processes and new ideas. And you have to take all these different pieces of information and to see how they fit into your own understanding. Do you believe in that technology or do you believe in that trend, yes or no? And um, you can only hope at the end of the day that you're right. Yeah. You're an active member of CIONET as well. How important is the community for you and how much do you learn from your colleagues? It's, it's extremely important. I mean, uh, it's the same like I said at the beginning, I don't believe that you alive, uh, survive alone. You need collaboration with suppliers and customers and it's the same in acting as a CIO. You need the information exchange with others. Otherwise, uh, stay at home. So it really, it makes no sense. You need input from others and you need to provide input. And uh, also there, follow the rules, life is given and taken. So sometimes you get good ideas, sometimes bad ideas, and sometimes you give a good advice to people, sometimes you give a bad advice. But um, I think the information exchange is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really thankful for the existing of um, CIONet. And what differs CIONet, and it's now not a marketing, marketing show, but my truly an honest understanding is that it's not a real online virtual network. No, you see the people face to face, you meet them and um, that's, that's awesome. And that's, that's uh, really for me the most important thing to have a personal relation which is reflected in game a high eye. So I need to have personal contact to people. And with that, I would like to thank you Nino for this, uh, for this wonderful input and, and, and your ideas and your time. It was a pleasure being here uh, with you in Frankfurt. Thank you very much. But for me, the first time in my life, such an interview. So, uh, yeah, really thankful. I and, enjoyed uh, it. Thank you very much.